In the summer of 1971, a woman died in St. John, New Brunswick. The local daily newspaper published a lengthy front page story about her death and life. During the previous decades, this woman had been just one of the city's poor, marginalized and ignored by most. She eked out a bare living making and selling artificial flowers on the street. Only through dying did she achieve recognition in a society which had let her fall through the cracks while she had lived. This is her story. The flower. The bell tolled low, scarcely heard at first. An itinerant artist saw her once when he came painting five dollar faces of pedestrians. He saw her and was intrigued by thoughts that filled her eyes and worlds she held in her skilled hands and strong will. Sitting her back to the wall as a defense against the electric wind sparking around her and chilling. He saw her and offered free to paint her portrait. The flower lady portrait was painted. There is in a business window where she walked a haunting portrait of the flower lady. She sits back to the wall, face to the wind short circuits, city gray, gazing into distance at green European fields or a warm farm home where a young girl once lived. She sits back to the wall, face to the wind, a basket of flowers at her feet. The bell tolled. She was the flower lady. She needed no more identification than that. She rose with alley cats and young babies. She rose with the crisp morning sun and sea breeze and was sometimes in her place at Market's Head as early as seven in the morning. She took brightly colored materials in the beginning and created flowers she sold all over the city. It was a restaurant where she ate, if you can call it that, a bit of tea and a bit of toast, not much of either. She sat alone, caring for her creations, her nearly flowers, pinching and shaping limp petals, straightening green, green leaves. Then she ate her usual late evening lunch, tea and toast, that was all. The bell tolled. It was often midnight before she returned to her room with her leftover not quite flowers. If the sun hung like a halo, the glow of its ring burning her eyes and dropping burning summertime to her shoulders, she walked. If the sea threw its net of fog over her, no matter, she walked. If winter wrapped cold claws around her and ducked icy teeth into her, she walked. One man recalls one cold and foggy night she knocked on his door at 11 at night, a good part of her bouquet still unsold. She lived chiefly on tea and toast. She hoarded her small cash reserved for materials to create nearly not quite flowers. For 22 years she occupied the same room had no guests or visitors who were seen. No relatives came to call on the flower lady, the bell pole. She was herself like a flower, a thin wildflower, bright and alive like the mayflowers she sold in the spring. Sometimes she wore a fresh, crisp bandana. Sometimes her grape basket was very gaily decorated with like a happy moment of childhood. Sometimes it was plain. The tributes are many. She was always neat and tidy. She would not take charity. Once, when her kindly landlady turned down a $3 payment she wanted to make on her rent, she went out and bought her a gift in the same amount. Everything recorded seems to enhance her memory. When her death was announced, few noticed. The bell tolled low. She needed no more identification than that.